Hey folks, Chuck here, Hillbilly Half Acre Homestead. No, yeah, we haven't uh, put out a video in a little while, and I uh, want to apologize for that. But I've uh, been working on a new project. Um, ran across some digital copies of, uh, of a series of books by Dave Gendry called uh, How to Make Your Own Machine Shop from Scrap Metal. The series starts off, it teaches you how to build a little foundry with, with charcoal and, and power it with charcoal where you can light your you can light it up and you can uh, melt scrap aluminum and make castings out of it in green sand and uh, build some pretty neat machinery <laughs> I uh, I was pretty impressed when I read through it at first you know and uh, they you know the first one starts off it teaches you how to build a foundry and then the very next one in the series it, it shows you how to build a, a a lathe and then I think the next one shows you how to make a metal shaper and then a milling machine a drill press uh, I think after that book number six I think just shows you how to make some accessories for the milling machine and the lathe like uh, shows you how to make gears for it and what have you change gears so you can do some threading on it and uh, well just to be honest with you folks I mean I was probably in my mid to late teens and I, I met up with an old timer lived out in the country and uh, went out there with my grandpa and he had a he had a big old metal lathe out there and some other mach machinery out there and what have you set up in a barn there uh, on his property you know and uh, my grandpa used to go to him you know when he'd need to get something welded or something machined or, or whatever you know because you know he grew up with a guy you know and it was a friend of his so he, that was his go-to guy you know a real great guy, awesome guy, and I remember some of the stuff that he was able to put together. You know, making some, make, taking pieces of steel, you know, and machining them into whatever shape he needed them to be, and welding them together, and just making anything. I mean, I've always been a woodworker. I've been, I've, I've worked with wood for years, and I took some classes in high school for metalworking, and they, uh, I don't know, I just pretty much got away from it since then. I've always wanted to be able to do that stuff, and well, even a cheap lathe has always been out of my price range. This series of books gives a person opportunity to be able to take and make it out of old scrap. Anything aluminum. You can melt down cans, although, you know, there's a lot of waste in cans, you know, about probably 40 to 50 percent of it gets thrown out because it, it's got a lot of trash and what have you in it. But uh, anyway, I've started the project. I've, I've, built, I've built the foundry. And I've started on the lathe. And I'm just now getting a chance to kind of make a video and kind of... I know this has been a homesteading channel, but part of homesteading is... Or the main thing to me of what defines a homestead is self-reliance. Or being as self-reliant as possible. And, uh, and a lot of that has to do with being as having as little dependence on the grocery store you know any kind of store you know because you know if something bad happens the end of the world comes or you know the end of the world as we know it at least uh, you're not gonna be able to run to the store all the time you know it's just that's that's just part of it you know and uh, that's one thing why we grow the animals and what have you that we do. We try to grow a little garden, but this was my first year living here. The garden didn't do well. That's why I didn't bother showing none of that to you. Um, but we're going to start working on this project, mainly because I feel it goes along with, with homesteading because with a lathe and with some of the other machinery that I want to build, it takes away your dependence on the auto parts store. It can take away your dependence on the hardware store. You know, there's a lot of stuff you run to for run, run, run and get from Lowe's even, or one of the other big box stores. You know, what are they? I think around here we've got a Home Depot and a Menards and all that. And uh, you know, with a lathe and with a milling machine and what have you. You know, especially if you've got the ability to take some aluminum. And I'm not going to stop with aluminum. Eventually, I'm going to try to have a foundry set up that I can actually cast some iron, run some cast iron and what have you in. And, but anyway, what, what I'm working on is uh, I started on the lathe. I've got the bed and the, the bases together. And I'm going to show you, 
a little bit about that later on. I just kind of wanted to touch base with you guys and kind of let you know about a new project. Now that doesn't mean we're going to be we're going to stop putting up stuff about the animals. If you've watched this channel for any length of time, you'll know that we might put up for a week or two or, or whatever. We might put up a couple of videos about rabbit. We might put up some videos about bees. We might put them up about quail. Uh, we just kind of try to mix it up, you know. And I know you folks, a lot of you are subscribing to the channel for one specific reason. You want to watch videos about rabbits. Or you want to watch videos about bees. I understand that. And if, you'll, and if you go to the channel, our main channel page, you'll notice that I've got that stuff sorted and organized in playlists. Rabbits, they've got a playlist. All the videos pertaining to rabbits, taking care of rabbits, is in a playlist. Okay? You can save that playlist or you can just go to the channel and access that playlist anytime you want to if you need to see if you want to go back and see one of those videos. But every time I put up a new rabbit video, I'm going to add it to that playlist. Okay? So if there's stuff on the channel that you're not interested in, I mean, we'd like to have for you to watch everything. I mean, you know, that's, I mean, that'd be great. But I understand. I mean, when I go to somebody's channel, sometimes there's videos on there that I'm not interested in. So I understand. Okay? But, I also, that's why I'm going to the trouble to organize everything. You know, there's a, bee play, a honeybee playlist, a quail playlist. I've, I've got one about stuff that I do out here with the shop when I'm making like the pigeon, the pigeon trap and uh, some of the beehives and stuff. Uh, you know, it, I, I think I just called it something about in the, in the workshop or something like that. Anyway, that, all that stuff is in a playlist. Now... That being the case, okay, if I'm making beehives, I'll put that in the workshop playlist, but I also will put it in the honeybee playlist because it pertains both ways, okay? Uh, same thing with the pigeon trap. It went on the pigeon playlist, but it's also in the workshop playlist. So eventually, if we have a lot of stuff that's done in the workshop, we'll actually have probably uh, more videos in that playlist than we do anywhere because there's going to be videos from it that are going to go into several other categories as well. So, Anyway, um, just wanted to touch base with you. Uh, I'm going to get you some more information about what's going on. I hope this is something that some of you might be interested in. Um, owning a lathe and a milling machine, that's just something I've wanted to do all my life. Or until I was, you know, like I say, probably in my mid to late teens. I, it's just something about watching that guy take, take you know, a a piece of round steel about like that and putting it on a lathe and making a part out of it or you know the same thing you know you could take a square block of aluminum and put it on a milling machine and make a part out of it that you might have had to go to the you know a part store somewhere and pay you know quite a bit of money but see you can make your own stock your own aluminum round stock you can make aluminum cubes and what have you to machine uh, all you got to do is melt that aluminum and cast it in a tube you know basically what you need is you need a tube or a square that's basically smooth inside it's got to have a little draft and I'll explain to you about draft uh, for those of you that don't know uh, I mean a lot of this is new to me but what I have learned I know and I'm, I'm, I'm more than willing to pass that on to somebody else you know uh, there's a lot that I don't know I'm just getting started in this but I guess that's what makes it so interesting is having something new uh, you know, I'm, I don't know, there's a lot that I can't do anymore, but one thing that I can do is I can, I can, I can always learn. I mean, I, it, it, it might take me three days now to do something some of these other folks with less physical problems. It might take them a couple hours, but it might take me three days. Well, you know, as long as the Lord lets me, lets me live three more days, I don't care how long it takes me. Anyway, I don't know if I'll put this piece of, of uh, video in with uh, something else, but uh, first chance I get, I'm going to show you what I've get done so far. I'm going to show you the foundry that I've made. I'd like to show you a melt, you know, a melt and a pour and what have you, and maybe show you, show you what I go through, what I've learned to do to, you know, to make up some of these green sand molds that I'm going to pour aluminum into to cast it and what have you, but for the time being, I guess, I, I guess I'm going to cut, cut out here and, uh, and we'll add to it later or what have you, because you ain't going to be able to hear me anyway over there, stupid geese and that dog. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, 
anyway we'll cut it off for now we'll uh, we'll we'll add some more information or add on to this video as we go along and uh, well, thanks for, thank y'all for watching and god bless